Well, a very good morning and welcome back to Planitza, the host town for the Junior Nordic World Championships for 2024. Well, once again, the conditions look fantastic and the local mountains just uh, sensational at this time of year. Bit of a mixed bag in terms of the weather over the week. It's been a little bit warmer than the organizers would have wanted. That is for certain. Uh, but reasonably cold overnight with some clear skies and that hardening the tracks nicely for some very good racing over the last couple of days. Teams that have come through and succeeded. Well, Canada getting a gold yesterday in the women's under 23 sprint event. What a fantastic uh, event that was. Norway did the double in the men's under 23 and Dora their first ever gold in an international cross country ski event. And of course that was uh, G Gina Del Rio, who uh, also went on to take the bronze this morning in the women's 20k mass start. Uh, so she is having a sensational meet. And I must say, uh, not only impressed by the results, but really impressed by the way she skis. I think she's uh, got a long way to go and uh, very, very exciting for Andorra and uh, all their cross country skiers. A little bit of fresh snow recently, very welcome. And uh, there you see the details of the course, 3.3 kilometer course, uh, a height different of 52 meters. It really is quite a, a tough one. Six times round to go up to the uh, 20 kilometer mark. And uh, you'll be familiar with many of these, uh, many of the features on the course. If you were with us last year for the World Championships, So those are the men in charge. Michael Kachera from the Czech Republic. Uh, Sreina Michol, uh, most of them former skiers. And uh, the 99 athletes coming out to take their place. We're back to the juniors today. It was the under 23s yesterday. So all these young men under 21, there are some absolute mega stars here. It's gonna be a fantastic race. And particularly uh, between Switzerland's Nicholas Steiger, who is the highest ranks in terms of feast points, but I don't think we can read everything into that. And then Alva Mulbeck, who, who Sweden sort of are promoting as the next Gundersfahn. He is a sensation. He's only 17 uh, and he's been, uh, he's been focusing on long distance races of late, uh, sponsored by Lager 157 at the age of 16. <laughs> that is pretty rare. They spotted a talent early. Uh, and the Norwegians will be hoping that Nordhagen and Hagen, Hagen, of course, who's already got a gold from the sprint event, if he's there at the end, uh, he's going to be dangerous. Uh, I think we've probably got five, six or seven athletes who can uh, realistically think they're going to win this one. But you probably go up to 15, 16 when it comes to uh, getting into the top three. The Americans delighted uh, with the way things have been going so far. And of course, getting a, uh, a bronze medal yesterday behind the two Norwegians in the men's under 23 sprint event. Uh, that was uh, very impressive from uh, Hagenbusch. He was delighted with that. And uh, of course, on day one, the USA getting a silver with Samantha Smith, who finished um, behind Gina Del Rio, the Andorran, who has uh, really set this championships alight with her two medals in two races. Logan Duncan goes for Great Britain, another product of the Huntley Ski Club, and uh, he'll be hoping to follow in the tracks of Andrew Young and Andrew Musgrave, who've been making uh, big waves on the FIS Tour. So 99 starters, it does mean that the lowest rank is a long, long way back. Wearing one is Nicholas Steiger for Switzerland. He finished fourth in the 10K in Whistler last year in the championships out in, in Canada. Uh, Alva Milbach. Uh, he's a big star, he's done a lot of racing, looking down his profile. There must be some concern that he's doing too much, but uh, he knows what he's up to. Uh, he's a superstar. Isai Naif, uh, certainly keep an eye out for the other Swiss athlete. Elias Danielson, tall figure, number two junior, I think, probably in Sweden at the moment. David Gio and Gio racing for Italy, a 19-year-old. 
won the uh, 10 free in the Czech Republic recently. It was about the 20th of January, I think, and we are underway. 20 kilometers to go. The women completing their run in under the hour, 52.48. Uh, I would be very, very surprised if this race isn't done within 48 minutes. We will see. And you'll pick out the difference. What have we got? 42 nations competing here in uh, Planita. And uh, from the very best down to those who uh, have really had very, very little opportunity to ski. They've done well to get here. Uh, this is good experience for them, but they will experience the gulf uh, between the world's best and the rest. A little bunch forming at the front already. The pace is not too high. Uh, Milbach of Sweden, obviously, in the white. He will be joined, I suspect, by Danielson, who's up there as well. Milbach already, uh, he's made an impression in one or two distance races. He was racing on roller skis in Trondheim over the summer. Uh, and many, many big names from the FIS world, lots of Norwegians, of course. Uh, but he was beaten by only two men, Simon Hegstedt Kruger and Johannes Husbert Klebo, who outsmarted him at the finish. And he was, he was quite quick to say, I've got a lot to learn about tactics. This man is a genius. And uh, Klebo, of course, will be uh, out in Canada, racing in Canmore over the next few days. So, steady pace. Number nine, that's uh, Eric Bergstrom, who's gone to the front. I think everyone uh, looks pretty uh, comfortable just taking it steady at the moment. As I was saying, they were going to do it in 48, <laughs> not at this pace. There's Milbach. Just uh, having a look at the technique. He has quite a lot of sink in the hips and the knees and the ankles. Uh, that's certainly something that we've seen from Klebo. Uh, Lars Berger from Biathlon used to have a, a very, very exaggerated movements, and he was quick. Quite a few athletes, uh, not so many, ski with straighter legs. Uh, I think probably the best exponent of that is uh, Usti Ugov, uh, who we obviously haven't seen for a few years. Made me think to whether many of the Russian stars of uh, 2019 and 2020 whether they are ever going to come back because their day may well have run in terms of being competitive at the highest level we will see but that doesn't look like being resolved anytime soon so the fact that we still have a huge bunch uh, i think indicative that many have decided to take the first 3.3 lap relatively steady Milbach leading on 3.04. Um, how much leading does he want to do? I can't see anyone who's dropped away. Their bib number uh, is obviously corresponding to their ranking, but that is in terms of uh, FIS points. Now, if you have a really good sprint race, you're going to get some uh, decent points. Works the other way, in fact. The lower your points, uh, the better you are. And uh, Steiger on 40.2. Uh, we've got Milbach on 41, then a bit of a gap back to Nordhagen at 47. If we go to the other end of the field, just to give you some idea, we've got Ru Hong Fang, uh, who is on 548 points. Number five, sitting in there, David Gio of Italy, 13th in the sprint the other day. I was just looking for... Hagen, who was the winner of the sprint for Norway, Lars Hagen. He's wearing bib number four, uh, should be in that leading group. Just going to do a double check. I can't see that uh, anyone has uh, withdrawn at the last moment. So uh, I think we do have... Uh, we can only see 98 athletes through the last checkpoint, which might mean that uh, one of them has dropped way, way off the pace. And I suspect that might be Fan. So one of the faster downhills, quite tricky here because some of it, as you can see, is in the shade and that is still pretty icy. 
and then you've got uh, a fair amount of the track in the sun as well. You've got to be very, very alert to the changing speeds. Everyone's safely down. The Swiss fans out in numbers. That is because uh, Nicholas Steiger is uh, reckoned to uh, be the next best thing. Dario Colonia still the out and out star in the uh, Swiss team. Feindrich, of course, their best female on the senior tour. So they're through one and a half K. Bergstrom there of Sweden just uh, relaxing. Lives south of Stockholm. Not to be too far of Stockholm. Otherwise, uh, it involves a lot of traveling just to find the snow. Sooner the southern part of Sweden used to get a decent covering, a really good covering. That is no longer the case. So around the S bends and um, yeah, looking pretty relaxed at the moment. The surface underneath is okay. Uh, they've done well to try and uh, get rid of any icy sections. And uh, the fact that you can't hear the skis uh, scratching on the surface. Pretty good indication that uh, the snow is in good nick. Well, it's a bit of a Sunday stroll on a Wednesday. So far, nothing uh, really lively. We'll get another time split as they come through the stadium. The bank where many of the uh, stands were for the World Championships last year. Yeah, what a shock these athletes are going to get if, even when they progress to the senior tour. Some quite good crowds this year. Uh, really impressed with Goms. I thought they put on a fantastic show. Uh, and I do think when you use a new venue and they get uh, they get the numbers in terms of the crowds, uh, they should go to the top of the priority list. Well, we've got a group of 20 or so. It looks like Gio of uh, Italy still uh, up the front, leading the way. Now that looks like, uh, is that Nordhagen? So around the stadium they go. Milbach ahead of Nordhagen. Gio in uh, third. Artusi still there. Lindbergh Gran, uh, who really should have been uh, competitive when it came to the sprint the other day. Uh, just looking for those bib numbers. Number 56, Kalel Pontabra of Spain. Uh, he did uh, he did pretty well in the sprint. I was impressed with that. Finished 11, uh, got himself into the semi-finals, uh, and then just I, th I think he used uh, used too much juice to get into the semi-finals. Then ha didn't really have the, uh, the the energy left to fight it out. It was a competitive sprint. I must say I was really really impressed. Uh, two days of very 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 good sprinting on a, on a course that I think is fantastic. So Milbach, Nordhagen are there. Steiger is still up there for Switzerland, uh, looking for high seeds who dropped off the pace. Uh, no one really noticeable. Oh, number four has dropped right down. Oscar Opstad Vika. He's 44 seconds back, so I suspect something is uh, very wrong there for Vika, uh, the Norwegian. Uh, he, he went through the 3.3 in 8:27, uh, but the uh, the leading time from Milpack is 7:43. So uh, something desperately not quite right there. On the other hand, they, the Norwegians have Melby and Skari. Uh, now, if you're with us for the first day, um, I did mention Skari, Philip Skari, who uh, put in a decent performance, finished eighth in the sprint. And I, I just pondered because I didn't know whether he was the, uh, the son or related to Benta Skari. He is, of course, the son 
Uh, Benter is now 51. She was uh, one of the best skiers in her time. Uh, medaled in the Salt Lake City Games, I think it was, the Olympics. Uh, would have been over 30K. Uh, she got the bronze medal, beaten by two Italians, Peruzzi and Belmondo, the golden era of uh, Italian women's skiing. Nordhagen does his share at the front. Milbach uh, is not going to let him go far. And suddenly the pace has accelerated. I think they all just, uh, I think they, it's like they had an agreement that they'd have a warm up lap. And now they're away. And uh, Nordhagen is the one who's going to push the pace here. He won the uh, Norwegian trial races in Linga. Looked very good there. Sixth in the 10 3 in Whistler last year. The 20 kilometer, a new introduction. We've uh, been using it on the World Cup for a couple of seasons now. The men and the women racing over the same distance. Yeah, it'll be interesting to know what everyone feels about that. Um, it does mean that the women are racing generally a little bit longer, but the old days of the, you know, the women doing a five, the men doing a 10, the women doing a 10, the men doing a 15. I think the differential was far, far too big, especially with the long distance racing. So that is what you call blowing the field apart. And uh, Nordhagen and Milbach have uh, got themselves clear. Milbach looking for the softer snow. Uh, you, the softer snow, he's looking for the firmer snow that hasn't been skied on so much. I think this is going to be a very, very tough task. Milbach looks to his uh, left. I don't know if he says anything. His aim is to uh, get qualified for the World Championships next year in Tron time. Um, he does a lot of the classic, the uh, classic races, and hence his sponsorship deals. But he's only 17, um, and already. He's up the front in a group of three. Are those going to be the medalists? Well, we will see. We've got Nordhagen, Milbach, and I think, I think, is it is it Gio in there of Italy, or is he in that second group? He's certainly up there in the top six. Going through four and a half K, Nordhagen, Milbach with the two leaders. But at that stage, they haven't really broken away from the others. Well, that is incredible when you think that uh, 40 athletes came through the stadium pretty much together after the first lap. Now the margin, absolutely massive. Looks like they're going to join forces. I, I suspect that in these conditions, these soft conditions, there's no wind to worry about, but in these soft conditions, a group of three uh, put themselves in a very vulnerable position if they try and stay away. And they'd be better to have some company, share the workload, and then uh, if you want to go on the penultimate lap or the start of the final lap, fine. Knife of uh, Switzerland has got in there. He's in the one with the red suit with the white below the knees or the greyish colour, off-white certainly. 12 is Philip Scari, so he's going well. I think he's a better classic skier from what I've seen so far, but uh, he's doing okay here today. Steiger of uh, Switzerland, uh, last I saw, he had dropped off the pace. I think that was Steiger of Switzerland at the back of that, uh, at the front of the second group. Uh, he is 20 seconds down on the leaders, so that will be a big disappointment for the Swiss fans, and there are many of them here. So we've got a group of seven out the front, and uh, when they come back down through the stadium fairly shortly, we'll get another readout. Well, there you see the... Uh, finish area in the background of or the the, the uh, landing zone the run out for the ski jump an area now being used for ski preparation and ski testing just as important at this level and the same rules applying here as we see on the World Cup in terms of the fluorocarbon waxes being banned Oh, 
Just going to give you some idea of the gap. Um, well, not everyone has gone through the four and a half K mark as yet. Uh, we've got over three and a half minutes already uh, between the leaders in the back of the field. They've only been racing for 10. Uh, these guys are 10. Uh, what that that makes it they're 30 to 35 percent faster than uh, those at the back these athletes many of them have had world cup experience leading is philip scari uh, looks like nordhagen just behind him geo is uh, in there for italy little back of sweden is still there but um, slightly surprised that Danielson has dropped away Eric uh, or I think uh, Bergstrom also uh, outside that first group Danielson last time we saw was uh, 16 seconds behind I'll give you an update as they just uh, just starting to go through the 6.6 five in that first group Nafers Switzerland is there David Gio at 2.7 seconds Malti of Italy is there Galli of Italy is there so three Italians four Italians in that front group that's a really good sign for them they can get together and work together uh, Galli actually 14 seconds back so the first group uh, is made up of seven athletes and then we've got a 14 15 second gap back to the second group which contains Lang of USA Milby of Norway Ganner of Austria is there and uh, Nuffa of Switzerland also in there. Bauer, the son of Lukas Bauer, plenty of uh, families. Uh, it's not so often. I, I, was, I was looking to see how often uh, those who go on to be overall World Cup champions win Junior World Championships, and it's not it's it's not more than 30 percent of the time. So, being a world beater at this level does not necessarily mean that you're going to be uh, conquering the world once you progress to the senior level. Hester of the Czech Republic down in uh, 40th place. He got a good 15th in the sprint event. Just missed out on going through to the last 12. Uh, very, very tight race there. But uh, David Pester of the Czech Republic, I think, pretty happy with that. Well, I wonder who he looks like. If you didn't know better, you might well think it was Clabo out on the skis. Um, isn't it astonishing, even in Norway, when the best skier skis one way, everyone else tries to follow suit. This is Jürgen Nordhagen. Is he uh, in a bid to get away? It's very, very early days. They've uh, only just completed the second lap. back the headband has gone for Sweden in the white suit and um, first of the drink stops gratefully received from Isai Naif well he is looking very very smooth um, I'm slightly surprised to see Nordhagen Certainly looks more comfortable than the than the rest. I was starting to think he'd gone the wrong way. He's so far clear, uh, and he's done that in the space. He's done that in the space of four minutes. Uh, so he's absolutely destroyed the chasing pack, and uh, they can't even see him up the top of the climb. This is where the 50-kilometer gold medal was pretty much uh, well. It wasn't decided on this climb, but they. They got rid of quite a few contenders at that stage. What a race that was. Goldberg and Clairbo coming into the stadium together and Goldberg out sprinting Clairbo. That was a sensational result for him. So the chasing six 
the chasing six 37 seconds back. If that isn't a decisive break, I don't know what it is. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that at this stage of a 20K. So uh, Nordhagen has uh, thrown caution to the wind. He, he was sitting in behind Scari for a while, but he just pressed the accelerator and absolutely destroyed the chasing group. Certainly, the Italians, the Swedes, and the Swiss will be devastated by that. Scari back at the group, back at the back of this uh, leading group at the moment. It looks to me, it looks to me as if Switzerland's uh, Isai Neff is still uh, in touch. He was 39 back. He's uh, he's still going to. He's at the back of this group, just trying to work out which of the other Swiss. I think it's Nuffa who's uh, starting to close in. There he is. There's Nuffa. Scari looks to be struggling a little bit uh, I think uh, maybe a little too ambitious going to the front 29 that's Teo Galli of Italy yeah he's lost uh, a good chunk of time recently Milby of Norway also in that second group so a big big difference and uh, quite a few of the athletes starting to look very tired. Well, here's uh, a really good demonstration of how to do the skate too. He's looking very comfortable, strong on the legs. Well, this is absolutely outstanding. The Norwegians may be uh, giving him a phone call tonight saying, get yourself to Canmore. There are plenty of uh, under 23 athletes uh, over in Canada at the moment focusing on the World Cup rather than the Junior World Championships. Uh, the top under 23 athlete in the world, uh, Edvin Anger at the moment. He's He's got some good points in the sprinting, which is really why he's up there. Uh, but he's he's getting a, he's a better all-round skier. He's a huge man uh, and really impressive. So he's the number one 20, under 23. Elia Barp of Italy in second. Jensen of Norway, who we saw on day one, is in third. And uh, Emil Danielson is uh, fourth. Not... Elias Danielson, who's racing today. Well, the way things are going, it looks as though it's going to be a race for second and third. Softer and softer and softer the tracks go. Um, obviously the women have already raced today they did do quite a lot of work uh, just to clean it up in between the two races but you need uh, you need sub zero you really need temperatures down around minus five nine minus six for the tracks to harden up that just didn't happen as we see uh, Axel Artuzzi, another of the Italians, last year as the uh, under-21s for him. Twelfth position last year in Whistler in the 10K. He was uh, 50 seconds off the mark of the winner. Antela won that one. Hagen was, uh, Hagen was in second place. Molestad was three. I uh, haven't seen any news on on uh, Hagen recently. Yeah, he's not managed to stay with the uh, that the, lead, the second group. So Frodo Himmer of Iceland is the first to withdraw. I don't know if he's taken a fall or whether just finding the um, conditions too tough. Great place to ski if you ever get out to Iceland. It can be a bit windy, uh, but uh, Akaruri up on that northwest side is a uh, fantastic venue. They're really keen cross-country skiers up there so that lead group um, noticeable I'm just surprised that Steiger isn't there Nordhagen uh, is now 56 seconds clear he is storming this one three of the six laps completed 
He's uh, through the halfway stage. A Tootsie of Italy at 56. Multi is there. Uh, I think the Swedes will be happy that two of their three still in that leading group. Actually, Gio has got himself in there as well. And Nuffer at 109. A 10 second gap between seven and eight. So we've got one leader out on his own. Six athletes who are at the moment vying for the silver and the bronze. And then a significant gap of 10 seconds back to Nuffer, Ghana, Galli of Italy, Melby of Norway at 125. Um, yeah, quite a few of the big names who would have been expected to succeed here today, certainly get themselves in the top five or six, are, are finding this pace a little bit tough. The best of the Americans is Jack Lang. If uh, that is where you are following this, Jack is 126, 1 minute 26 behind the race leader. Uh, and he's in a group with Melby and Galli of Norway and Italy. Uh, so quite a qu high quality field. And Danielson just losing touch with them. Austria have uh, Jana Valka in there as we have another look at um, Jürgen Nordhagen, we knew his form was good. We saw him racing in Linga and he was uh, in sensational form. Seldom out of the top 10. He was 33 seconds behind uh, in Whistler last year in the 10K. Uh, <laughs> he's going at the moment. He's going to end up 1 minute 33 ahead of everyone else. Seventy-three is Yegorov from Kazakhstan. Uh, good um, full quota of Kazakhs racing today. Vladimir Shminov, uh, still the most famous. When was he racing? Uh, in the 80s. Certainly he was out in uh, Calgary in 88. He uh, was racing well in 85. When skating was introduced, he was a big, strong man. Well, this is a carbon copy of uh, Johannes Hussler Clever. Look at the uh, angles that he achieves. The knee well in front of the toe. Uh, not quite, not quite as smooth as uh, Clever, who I think most of us would agree is the best all-round skier at the moment. I think in terms of cardiovascular capacity, um, I think Kruger probably tops the list when he's on form. Uh, and he's one of those athletes who has quite a big differential between his good days and his bad days. Well, this group have been sharing the lead. At the moment, it's Axel Artuzzi who is there. Um, yeah, we saw him. He's pretty quick on roller skis. Uh, I don't think this snow gets anywhere near the feel that you get on roller skis. It is much, much harder at the moment. It's so soft, but his balance is impeccable. Milbach sitting behind him. I wonder what Milbach's feeling having just watched, watched Nord, Nordhagen disappear over the horizon. And so many people had thought the battle was going to be between Steiger, Milbach and Nordhagen. Uh, Nordhagen already threw 11.15, the rest coming through. We are now at 120. That is just crazy. He had a lead of... Um, Nordhagen had a lead of 56 seconds at 10 kilometers. 1,100 meters later, he is, uh, he's another 21 seconds clear. Incredible ski, absolutely incredible, if, if he can keep it going. Twenty-nine. Theo Galli, fifth in the sprint. Thirteen was Jack Lang from USA, as I mentioned. And um, he was beaten by uh, Hagenbush in a 10, 10K freestyle recently. Hagenbush with his bronze medal from the sprint event. Artutsi, 12th in the 10K in Whistler last year. 49 seconds off the winners. Well, Milbach, who's uh, in second in this group, he's a, he's a great skier, but he's not as fluent. Uh, as I mentioned at the start of the program, he's, he's decided to focus on the long distance races. That's the Loppet races, the classic uh, series. And uh, 
when you do that, you definitely suffer in a high-paced race like this. And that is uh, quite a break coming up. Was that Artunzi? I think it is the Italian Artunzi who has gone for broke, trying to secure himself the silver medal position. A little bit of skate three into skate two. He looks just as fluent, just as comfortable as he did at the start. Um, he is on a good pair of skis. I don't have any doubt about that whatsoever. Looking fantastic. What a great feeling. Um, he is slowly but surely going to knock some of the tail enders out of this race. Each lap taking roughly seven and a half minutes and uh, going through 10 kilometers, we had 6.51 between first and 79. I think, uh, I think Nordhagen is gonna spoil the day of quite a few, <laughs> quite a few athletes. I'll, I'll, have a little, I'll have a little guesstimate that uh, he is gonna catch, um, I think he's gonna catch 25 athletes, uh, which will put them out of the race. That is one of the, uh, one of the disadvantages of having a, a loop race at 3.3 kilometers. Gone are the days where they disappear into the woods for 20k. Well, that's uh, just looking for any signs of weakness. He's still looking pretty good, isn't he? Uh, but I just thought he was doing skate three where many would have opted for the skate two. North target through 13.2 kilometers. So four laps completed, two to go, two to go, and he should be out there for just around 16 minutes. Uh, add that on to the 31. So let's say 47, 47, 30, somewhere around there could be the winning time today. But he's at the moment, he's got absolutely no need to maintain this pace. He doesn't get any more gold for being two minutes ahead of everyone else. Now, is this bid for a silver going to work for the Italian? A Tootsie. Well, the first five, first four athletes have already been taken out uh, in terms of being lapped. Uh, Skolnix has gone, Hema has gone, Christensen has gone, Lee has gone, uh, Fan has just gone. So that's five athletes lapped already. And uh, Nordhagen has another two to go. So Artutzi goes through 119 uh, behind, and that is exactly where he was at 11.5. So in the last two kilometers, he's managed to hold the pace that Nordhagen set. Wouldn't that be an incredible comeback? Well, this is a, a different picture altogether. These guys are struggling. They are absolutely struggling. They have gone and lost. Uh, what's that? They're 141. So they've lost another 21 seconds in the last two kilometers. That's a massive margin. Well, there's only one medal at stake for these guys. And I think uh, the last lap could be fairly impressive. Nuffer of Switzerland there in the red and white suit. Just next to him uh, is Teo Galli, who we saw a little bit earlier on. And the USA um, just trying to update you. Uh, Jack Lang has just gone through. He's at 219 at the moment. And Lang down in 10th place. So the place sounds a whole lot better than the deficit. This is our race leader, Nordhagen. Yeah, the pace is still good. Uh, his balance on this soft snow, absolutely sensational. Number 75 uh, has only got another couple of meters to run. Torres of uh, Argentina is uh, about to get 
short, sharp drift from Nordhagen. And uh, you can see up front, what do we got? We've got another 10, 11, 12. They're all being taken out of the race uh, because they are just about to be lapped. And uh, this man has done the slower athletes no favors whatsoever. They've uh, not even managed to get to the 13 kilometer stage. Still, they've had a day out. They know what it's about. They uh, can see what they've got to do. Hagen <laughs> ripping through the tail enders like nobody's business. Absolutely incredible performance from him. to see uh, we should get another split uh, on our Tootsie of Italy the jury are busy today 99 started how many are gonna finish today now I hope we don't have a collision here 74 just needs to be aware Racina overtaken by Nordhagen there he goes, he must be enjoying this. Um, yeah, whenever you've been out, any any sort of sporting activity, when you're catching someone, you feel great. Uh, when you overtake them, you feel even better. But the, the advantage that Nordhagen has is that he's got these people to aim for. Very, very different from being out on his own. And there are still plenty left uh, as targets. Now, this is the bronze medal group. Uh, at the back of that group at the moment is Gabriel Malti of Italy. Leading the way is uh, Isai Naif, who finished an agonizing fourth in the sprint event. Certainly thought we'd see him in the top three. Uh, Artuzzi now at 134. Last time we saw him, he was at 119. So after a burst between 11 and 13K, uh, he's now traveling at the same speed as the group behind. That is good enough because he had he had a 20 second lead over the group behind before. What is it now? It's better. It's up to 26. Uh, that's looking very good for the Italian in terms of the silver medal. Knight there in three. He's he's going to have a fight because Milback is there. Gio is there. Sixteen point five will be the bell for Nordhagen, and he's going to get that fairly shortly. We'll get another split at seventeen point five, and from there it's all the way into the finish. Nineteen point eight, the total distance for today. Uh, it's uh, down as a twenty k race. Good enough, close enough. Yeah, some damage being done to the tracks. Uh, it was up in double figures yesterday by the hottest stage of the day. I think we're going to be around. 15 16 by the end of today uh, there's plenty of snow there so it will survive till the end of the week and suddenly philip scari is struggling he is struggling and that could be the end of his medal chances gabriel malti behind him uh, the technique starting to get a little bit ragged and if you don't push hard over the top of the climb by the time you get to the bottom of the descent you find yourself 50 60 meters clear what a demonstration of dominance we are seeing today and uh, Nordhagen has yet another target to go for well, I must say the jury are doing a, a really good job because so often the athletes actually have to work their way past an athlete before they get pulled out. Uh, but just to make sure that the track is clear for the race leader, uh, it would be absolutely tragic if there was some sort of interference or incident that involved him breaking a pole or a ski. To be honest, <laughs> I think he could probably scoot on one ski from here and still win this one. Uh, we will get another readout. 134 is his current lead, a minute and a half. He's about 650 meters clear of uh, his nearest rival. Well, there is 
no surprise that we're going to get a Norwegian winner, but it's the manner in which Lord Hagen has executed this. So down into the stadium for the penultimate time. Next time he comes through this part of the course, it will be to finish and uh, to prepare himself for a fairly inevitable gold medal. Now, let's see what's going on behind because um, I think, I think uh, we are finding that our Tutsi is having the gap closed on him by one of his teammates and he won't thank him for it. David Gio is coming up strong. Uh, we could see two Italians on the podium. Isai Naif of Switzerland has not given up on this one yet. There is our Tutsi, Axel Artutsi. Now, what is the gap between our Tutsi and Gio? It was, it was at 26 seconds. Well, that is coming down dramatically. That is coming down very, very fast. And uh, with one lap to go, I do not think our Tutsi is safe there in the silver. And if he loses silver, the chances are he may lose the bronze as well because Naif is uh, pretty much glued to the back of Gio at the moment. There you go. They're closing from 26 seconds. They are down to less than 15, certainly probably closer to 10 and our Tutsi is going to see them as they come through the stadium. For his sake, I hope, I just hope that he's reserved something for this last lap. And it's going to be the hardest, not just because it's the last, it's the hardest because the tracks are softer and deeper than they've been at any stage so far today, at any stage during these championships. That is the margin. What is it? 100 meters? Uh, let's have a look at the time. Our Tutsi stops the clock at 153. He was 26 seconds clear, and it is now uh, 204. So it is down to 11 seconds. 11 seconds to gain. They gained. Uh, they gained uh, what? 15 on that last lap. In fact, it was half a lap. And Naif and Milpak and Skari and Multi, they're not out of it. They are not out of it. If someone has saved something, Milpak um, not looking quite as lively as I was expecting. The tempo's just that much slower, which is one of the features of the really long distance athletes. He got a top 10 in the Vassalopit last year at 16. Fancy that. Incredible. Uh, the Vasa, what is it, 92 kilometers from Salem to Mora. Now, number 20 is about to get a bit of a surprise. That is Matt Celine of USA. Member of the Sugar Bowl ski team. And away he goes. I don't think he will quite believe it. So Celine is out. The judges will not let him progress past this banner. And uh, <laughs> Nord Hagen, Nord Hagen is uh, not content. He's not content with a two minute lead. He wants to push it up as far as he can. Well, there's still quite a long program to go at these championships. Uh, a day off for the juniors tomorrow, obviously, when we see the under 23s going over the same distance. They've got a classic 10K on Friday and then the mixed relays for both the juniors and the under 23s on Sunday. So two races still to come, but Nordhagen, knowing that this was his best chance of gold. And he has... Two point one Ks to go. And um, that will not take him long at all. So suddenly, the Italians are together. Number 14, that is Axel Artuzzi. He was the man who went with just over two kilometers to go, uh, not in a bid to catch Nordhagen, but I think in a bid to secure the silver medal. 
uh, and he is paying the price for that now. Nordhagen went after the first lap. Absolutely incredible. Great to watch, and I look forward to seeing the Norwegian papers tomorrow morning with the uh, World Cup skiers having a rest at the moment as they settle themselves in Canada, get used to the get over the jet lag, uh, which is a significant factor when you go there. Racing on the Olympic tracks from 1988. All eyes will be on this young man. And Jürgen Nordhagen with less than two kilometers to go now. A series of switchbacks. And um, what a can. I'm just going to try and update you on the numbers that have been taken out of the race. Well, we're, we're over 20. He has got, he, he has uh, lapped more than 20 athletes already. I think it's going to be closer to 35 by the end of today. Oh, yeah. 12 is Philip Scari, Milbach, uh, uh, getting a bit of a rude awakening, the 17-year-old. He is two to three years younger than most of the athletes here, but I think the Swedes really thought he might be fighting it out for the medals. At the moment, it's Italy in goal, in, in silver and bronze. Uh, they're way off the pace, being set by Nordhagen. And we've got, uh, is that Naif of Switzerland, who's starting to try and make his bid to get back with the uh, medal positions. They've lost, uh, they've lost some valuable ground there. That's slightly surprising. It was a really good opportunity for Naif if he could just stuck in behind Gio, who uh, is now looking the best position for the for the silver medal. Scari, eighth place in the sprint, and he's going to be in the top eight again today. Milback is struggling. He is struggling. Milpak at uh, over two and a half minutes behind. Uh, I think those legs are feeling a little bit weak. Would be interesting to have a chat with him. The World Championships next year look a long way off, a long way off at the moment. He's got some work to do. Is, is, is 20K just too short for him? I think that's possible. And there is our, our champion in the making. He has not got far to go, and if he wants that flag, he can afford to do the last kilometer with the flag. Of course, do not pass up that sort of opportunity. Here he comes, Jürgen Nordhagen. Remember that name. He is going to be around for many years. He's only 19, and he has destroyed. He has destroyed a field of 99 very, very talented cross-country skiers. He's not a few seconds clear, he's a few minutes clear of everyone else. 20 Ks completed, he is the gold medalist here, and Norway get their uh, second gold in the men's, having won the sprint in the under 23 category. That is unbelievable. <laughs> he looks as fresh as a daisy. And what won it for him? Well, in my book, he was the closest to perfection in terms of technique. He's not even out of breath. Quite staggering what he's done today. And uh, I like the fact that he wasn't happy with a one-minute lead. He went for as big a lead as possible. And, uh, well, we don't know how big it is at the moment. Last time we saw he was 2 minutes 14 clear. Uh, and that was at 17.75. What's he managed to do in the last 2 games? You would have thought the chasers would get a little bit closer than that, but it may well be a two and a half minute uh, margin. So they're approaching now the final bit of the sprint course. Uh, in uh, a minute or so, they'll be just to their left, but going the other way. That nice little drop, I do like it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a friendly little drop into the stadium. Gives you a bit of speed as you come for the line. Now the race for the silver and the bronze. Round the trees, it's a big loop turn. The Planitza loop. 
that leads them into the final uphill. Gio certainly has looked the stronger of the two Italians over the last couple of kilometers, but it's uh, nice to see that uh, there is still some fight left in Artuzzi. He's not going to let this silver medal go without some sort of uh, an effort, but I think he's left his charge. There he is. Actually, it's Artuzzi. I do apologize. Artuzzi's come through. He's recovered somewhat because he looked absolutely shot with three and a half K to go. So silver and the bronze medal to the Italians. Nice to see a mix of nationalities. Norway take the gold, and the Italians double up with the silver and the bronze. Our Tutsi survives. Gio must have thought the silver was coming his way. 2 11, the margin between first and second. Philip Scari, it's been a good last lap, a really gutsy final lap from him, but with two laps to go. Uh, I think he was probably doubting whether he'd ever get to the end. He looks shot. And uh, again, Isai Naif of Switzerland, uh, who certainly came here expecting to be taking medals home. Uh, once again, he's finished just off the podium. Fourth in the sprint, fifth in the 20K. Let's hope he does uh, a couple of places better when it comes to the 10K Classic. Forty-seven minutes, the winning time. I did say fifty. I said there'd be forty-eight. I think at the start of the program, uh, the women's was one in fifty-two forty-eight. Uh, the conditions a little bit quicker. Uh, no, that's an understatement. Much quicker this morning. Still some uh, frost in the snow from the uh, overnight temperatures. Uh, but uh, the first lap was relatively uh, kind in terms of the track conditions. But by the time they got on to the second loop with 99 athletes out there, uh, all going around the lap uh, six times, totally, totally destroyed. Well, at last count, at the last count, just short of 50% of the field had been lapped. That is a little bit of history. And um, I'm going to have a little wager that 211 is the biggest winning margin in the. Uh, well, it will be because they've not done a 20k before. So I'm safe on that one. Uh, but I don't think even over 30k we've seen a margin of two minutes 11 seconds between first and second. Nordhagen has uh, absolutely astounded the, the fans here and uh, his name is going to be on everyone's lips tonight. I think there'll be a few nervous members of the Norwegian uh, A-team uh, <laughs> watching his talent come through. How will they race him? It's going to be interesting to see, isn't it? Because he's certainly got the quality to go straight to the World Cup circuit from here. Great day for the Italians. Number five there, David Kio, the uh, bronze medalist. Seventh in the sprint. He's uh, done a whole lot better today. Daniel Sun of Sweden at 5.07, just ahead of Akida of Japan. Good run from Akida. I think he'll be happy enough with that. Uh, remember, it was what, a seven and a half minute loop, so these athletes weren't far off being lapped. Wes Campbell of USA. Um, I think he might just, he might just have started his final lap before Nordhagen came through, in which case um, he will be out on the tracks for another uh, four minutes or so. Cormier of Canada, just ahead of his teammate Picard. And they'll all look up at the scoreboard and gasp in disbelief at the time differential between themselves and the winner. Colel Pantabra of Spain at 21st position. Not a bad run, really, but um, again, he was he was quite well positioned early on. 11th in the sprint, 21st in the 20K. Uh, he's having a good week. 13, that was Jack Lang of the USA. Kushihashi of Japan at 6.15, Kazakhstan's Bazarbakov 
What a great name. Christian name. Uh, just try and pick it out. Uh, Sultan. Sultan. Leinbergen from France. I was um, yeah, slightly surprised looking at the rankings that we haven't got uh, French and German juniors any closer to the, the top than they are. Uh, the Americans certainly seem to be growing in strength as far as, the, as far as their juniors are concerned, and they've already taken two medals from these championships. Samantha Smith with a brilliant silver medal in the women's junior junior uh, sprint on, on the first day. just in case you weren't with us earlier this morning. Um, the women's race won in 52-48. Uh, Gismandi of Italy, so the Italians, have got a gold, a silver, and a bronze in one day. That goes down as an exceptional performance from them. Uh, Anakin Sand of Norway was in the silver medal position, just 12 seconds off the lead, and Gina Del Rio, uh, who, whose name you'll remember from the junior sprint two days ago, she took the bronze medal, 21 seconds down. So she's got a gold and a bronze to be, take back to Andorra. Uh, she doesn't have a strong enough team to do anything in the mixed relay on Sunday, but uh, keep an eye out for her on Friday. I'm sure, I'm sure she'll go in the in the 10 kilometer although it is a classic style and it's her freestyle that is is her forte uh, but you never know she might be able to make it three medals so let's just confirm the finishing positions Jürgen Nordhagen no argument no question he is the 20 kilometer champion here in Planitza 47 35 the winning time the next best was 49.47. Well, I'm just looking down to see how many men would have beaten the fastest woman today. Normally, it would be about 45.50. I can tell you today it is just 20. Just 20. Uh, that is an indication. Colel Portava of Spain, uh, with his time, would have come. Uh, well, he would have been outside the top three in the women's race. And here he is, sitting in 21st position. Uh, and that tells you all you need to know about the snow conditions. Generally, they are 10 to 15% quicker uh, across the snow. So the men got the short straw today. They got the lion, but they got the soft conditions. And the bad news for them is it's going to be like that all the way through. The women going first on every day. It's uh, slightly unusual in this day and age. Yeah, and if you wanted any indication of how warm it is, there you have it. Spring has arrived in Slovenia. For these guys, a week too early. goes on like this I think we'll see a few arms and legs cut off the ski suits maintaining your body temperature so so important uh, in these conditions it is not easy so let's have a quick look a quick recap here in uh, planet so we started with 99 and to be honest even on that first lap you can see just how soft it is but that first loop with 99 skiers did a lot of damage, particularly on the corners and particularly on the steeper uphills. It was a warm up pace for the first loop. And then out of sight of the cameras, Nordhagen just went for it. Led early on. Nordhagen still there with the group and in the space of no time he'd opened up a gap of 30 seconds that was it when everyone else stopped for a drink he just pressed the accelerator away he went 
and um, no looking back from there on in. By seven and a half K, he was already 37, 36, 37 seconds clear. When he went through after five of the six laps, he was just short of two minutes clear of everyone. The next big thing. I think his sponsors will be pretty impressed with what he's done today. The Italians, they've got to be happy. Uh, yeah, really nice to see them them doing well. And uh, from what we've seen, uh, with an Italian women winning the women's 20, uh, and they've got silver and bronze in this, they could be favourites for the mixed relay on Sunday. Uh, I think they will have set their sights firmly on that. Two skating legs and two classic. Generally the classic where the Norwegians uh, manage to pull away. that's for the front pages of the local paper and uh, I suspect the Norwegian press will be uh, wanting to hear all about Jürgen Nordhagen's race there what can he tell them he had brilliant skis he did but he also skis brilliantly on those skis yeah, here he is congratulations what an amazing race how did you feel today yeah it was perfect and, uh, and thank you uh, yeah, I was I felt great and uh, I've been preparing really well in the past weeks and uh, yeah, I also have to say the course and the conditions was perfect for me today so uh, couldn't be any better. Can you again top or not? Yeah, I think it was very good. I trained well and did what I should the last week so it worked really well. And the race was all around was very perfect today and very loose and good for my own side so it was really good. Well that's interesting. I think you could have found 98 athletes out of that field of 99 who said the tracks were rubbish uh, because they were tough. They were very, very tough. But your winner came here with a positive attitude. And generally, when you're a strong skier, the harder the conditions, the better it is for you. His balance was impeccable. He might as well have been on the best tracks in the world for all we could tell. Uh, and that was the difference today. Uh, his body form stayed exactly the same. His balance was immaculate from start to finish. Fantastic effort, great day, and we'll look forward to more racing tomorrow. 10.15, the start time for the uh, under-23 women's 20-kilometer mass start. We'll see you there.